G'day Mr Fitz here, hope you're going well. This is video 2 of our tutorial for our mould design. So tutorial 2, we are focused here on designing of the gate plate. So this is number 2. Um, we can find our dimensions on our drawing here. So this is our gate plate. Now the idea of this, what a gate is in a mould is essentially the pathway for our material to flow through. So we're going to basically pour or inject our plastic or metal in through this side gate. It's going to come in through this hole and then sort of coming away from the screen or into the screen it's going to then go into our profile. So this dimension may need to vary um, once you've built your design to make sure that that plastic or metal can flow into the main part of the mould. So we call this a gate. Alright so the clever thing to realise with our design here because of this mould stacks together all four of these plates are very common in size and all of these holes need to line up. So one of the clever things we can do with a bit of critical thinking is that we can actually utilise the same files all the way through for our parts. So if we go back to our tutorial one, in the first tutorial you built the base plate, we call this one part one base, and I reminded you it was important to save your file and give it a name, so part one base. Now what we can do is we can move on to part two now if I go File, Save As, what I'm going to do here effectively is create a copy of my part. So under Save As, I'm going to call this one Part 2, and this is going to be my gate plate, just call it Part 2 Gate, and go Save. You should notice at the top here the file name has changed. So essentially, what I'm going to do now is just modify this part to be the same as what I'm after. So back on our drawing in part two, you'll notice that the difference between part one and part two, they are the same thickness, so six millimetres here and six millimetres here. Um, and all we've done here is added this little 20 millimetre by five millimetre cutout, and there's a radius and what we call a chamfer in there. So fairly easy little part to create. So if I come back to my part here, what I'm gonna do is create a sketch as always, we start with a sketch to do something. Um, with the sketch, choose a plane. I'm going to draw on this top face. Now, what I'm going to do here is draw a, a little pocket cutout. It doesn't really matter which side you do it because these things are, are symmetrical. Um, so I'm going to change this one to a corner rectangle, different kind of rectangle. And I'm going to just click on my part on this edge and click over here. So just randomly draw it. Press escape to get out of it. Now you'll notice again, it's blue so I can move it. Now one thing to be careful of, you'll notice as you're sketching that every time you draw a line or a feature, existing geometry, in other words, existing lines, you can pick up endpoints. If you hover over the middle, you can pick up a midpoint. Circles, you can grab the midpoint of a circle. We can use existing geometry to sketch and click our designs to it. And if we press escape in here, we can also drag and I can basically drop this onto certain features. You'll notice that what it does when it creates some geometry, you see these little green icons? This is basically the information that's inside the sketch. So this is telling me that that's pinned to this line. This is horizontal, horizontal, vertical, vertical. And I can drag this however I want. Now I'm just going to start quickly by dimensioning this. So this from memory, so if I go dimension, this line here was 20. And the width of this pocket is, is actually 5. Like so. Now press escape to get out of that. Now what I can do clever thing you can do in CAD is use what's called reference geometry. So if I go under line, if I change a line to a center line, you notice how a center line is dashed. What I can draw, do is draw a line, let's say from the center of this line, and I'm going to draw it to the midpoint here. And you can see if I click on both ends, it gives me a midpoint and an endpoint constraint. Press escape to get out of that. Now what I can do, a clever thing I can do here is if I click on that line, if I make that line horizontal, so the same as these ones here, if I click on that one and over here, you'll notice it pops up horizontal. These are called geometric constraints. So if I go horizontal, straight away it pulls my geometry down. 
So that is in the center of that. Clever little way to make that centered. A few other ways you can do this. You don't have to always pick up that point there. If I delete that, what I could do is draw, I can draw a line between say here and here. Now, if I just draw a standard line, if I click on the line, what I can do is turn that to a construction line by clicking here. That toggles it between being a normal line and a construction line. Now, if I drag that point there, you can see along here, I can pick up the midpoint of that long line. There we go, there's the bell. And there we go, look at that. It's now all black, that's exactly what I want. So keep it simple, I'm just doing the outline of this. Now, next step is I'm gonna cut this. So features, extrude, cut. And like I said in the first video, rather than going six mil, this is gonna always go through the part, so I'm gonna go through all and click on the tick. Beautiful, let's cut it out. Now the two things I need to add to this to finish it, one is a radius in these two corners. So if I go fill it, this is a clever little tool that rounds the corners. Now, the dimensions for this is gonna be 2.5. So because this is five wide, if I click on that edge, you can see the preview and that edge there, you can see a preview. If, it's, if yours isn't previewing, you can just change this to partial or full preview just so you can see the yellow example. And you'll see that two times by 2.5 will give me a full round in there. Click on the tick to finish that off. And that's that part there. Now to help us get our flow of plastic or metal into our mold, what I'm gonna also do is I'm gonna add a chamfer. The chamfer just basically lobs off the corner. Um, a standard chamfer is always 45 degrees and mine's gonna be two mil. So click on that edge and that edge there, and that will take those two off. Click on the tick, yippee. There we go. Um, cool, so you can click back, just check your dimensions. They should line up with, with what's on the drawing. Um, there's another little clever thing we can do in this program under the evaluate ribbon. And you can actually use a measuring tool. So if you're unsure about something, and you can't get the dimensions from your sketch, you can always go measure. And let's say to check this is gonna be centered, I could go from say this edge to this edge and it will tell me that, uh, what's it telling me? It says the length is 50. So minimum distance. So I go there to there. That's not really telling me what I wanna, hit, wanna see. What I can probably do is go, um, a little tip in this program, if you press the control key on your keyboard, you can pick up two lines. There we go, press control. Tells me that's 35 millimeters from there to there. If I also go from there to control there, oops, didn't work. Try again, there to there. Hang on, go back in, there to there. 35 millimeters distance. So good to just to check things and that's a little tool to do for that. Um, double check, everything's right against your drawing. Looks correct, five, two, 20, 2.5. That's it, that's part two. Make sure you save it, off we go. Cool, see you in the next video.